Fast snacks, fast food, fast reviews. Snack Masters Inc., a podcast served to you in 30 minutes or less. Snack Masters Incorporated. Snack Masters. Snack Masters. You'll be snacking with the Snack Masters. Snack Masters. Hello and welcome to Snack Masters Incorporated. I'm Dooner, here with Flavor Town's last remaining resident. It's MSG. MSG, how are you? I'm doing great, man. I couldn't be better. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, but you know, I, I was just reading an article that unsettled me a little bit. GQ. They wrote an article, and this is the headline. This isn't like the first line of the story. This is the actual headline. There are too many flavors, and it has turned the snack industry into a vicious hellscape. (laughs) And the crux of this article is that there are way too many flavors available. And, you know, he bemoans the fact that, like, when he was a kid and he'd have a debate about which Dorito was best, it would either be Cool Ranch or Nacho Cheese. There wasn't a ton of other varieties. Uh, You know, and he even concedes that it doesn't matter if they have all these other flavors as long as they make the original ones, because he was upset that his friends are so generous, they bring these limited edition snacks to his house and sometimes leave them there, and then nobody eats them. I don't know what they're talking about there. But you and I have talked about this many times on the show. We've, We've opened segments talking about all the new varieties of flavor that we've seen, and you and I have looked at it with, like, wonder and whimsy very excited to try all these things and i don't know are you feeling this gq guy no you know he just seems like he's just just an angry dude his name's uh dana evans wow he really he really uh i i don't know if it's just like a a a prompting to be the antagonist or what man he uses a lot of big words he's uh he's definitely busted out the thesaurus and is uh fascinated by his own mastery of the language. You think he's like the Armand White of snacks? Do you know who Armand White is? He's a uh, he's a reviewer on Rotten Tomatoes. He's usually the <laughs> one guy to give like a movie that has 100 on there. He's the one who comes in and submarines the film. He's a rank and tour. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's, who gets mad about more options? Yeah, I guess, I guess you know, and, and his, he talks about his buddies bringing over. He's lucky he has buddies that bring food over. Yeah. You know, like, that's cool. How do you venture out and try something new if you just want, you know, white bread and mayonnaise, how do you know what else is out there, man? I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. <laughs> no. I'm really hurt by this article too because I feel like the character that he's lashing out against in this is me. Because <laughs> I'm the guy who brings a limited edition snacks to my friend's house, and you know, I, when you bring something to someone's house, you do the right thing and you leave it there. You don't take it with you. <laughs> you know, you, that's that's a little, uh, yeah, that's a little low class. You got to leave it with your, your. So his friends are just being nice to him. And here's how far apart. Here's how polar opposite I am from this guy. He opens the article where he poses a question, and his question is. When is the last time you asked a friend to name their favorite snack and their response was extra screaming dill pickle Pringles? Because you know what? You never asked me. What was his name? Arnold Armand? He didn't ask me that because if he did, I would say that is, in fact, my favorite Pringle. Yeah. I, again, I think it's I mean, this is why we do this show is to, you know, we both like trying new things and weird things. And, you know, some of it sticks and some of it's a dud. But and I, I mean, I bring candy to work. That I mean, I bring these ginger chews. Nobody had ever had them before. Nobody had ever, but I leave a bag there, and by the end of the shift, they are gone. People love these things, and it's an oddball candy. I mean, I pride myself in going for things that are kind of off the grid, and I'm glad they're out there. I don't blame you. Those ginger chews, by the way, great for settling the stomach. My wife turned me on to those. She gets them from Trader Joe's all the time. The only one that I didn't like, I've had like orange, and I think I just had like plain ginger, but then I had one that was like peanut butter and ginger. Oh. That didn't go together. Yeah, talk about weird flavors. Oh, yeah. And maybe I'm with Armand <laughs> on that one little point. Maybe keep the peanut butter <laughs> out of the ginger. Although, you know, if, if you have like satay chicken, right? That like with the peanut sauce, isn't that kind of a, a peanut ginger blend? Peanut ginger? Yeah. Well, and here's the, here's the other thing, Dooner, is that I'm not so arrogant to think that just because I don't prefer a flavor that nobody else is going to either. I mean, I don't want to just quit selling those snacks that I don't like. I mean, it might be somebody else's favorite, man. Who knows? Variety is a spice of life. I don't know if this guy just sits around and eats saltines or plain old Doritos or what, but what a weird thing to get angry about. In protest of the article, <laughs> we decided to dedicate this show to the weirdest snacks we could find in one grocery trip. <laughs> That's like weird, but things that this guy would definitely upset him. Things that would 
would make <laughs> it would make his skin crawl. Yeah, I, I found some good ones, and I'm gonna you know the, w- when I was looking around the store, what I ended up in, I was in the chip aisle and everything, and for some reason I, I was wishing for more variety in there. It didn't hit me, so I had to start branching out in the store. So I ended up getting breakfast and dessert, and since I'm a full grown man. I am going to have my dessert first. <laughs> Plus, I don't want it to melt. <laughs> Do you guys have this out in Idaho? It is called Big Gay Ice Cream. I'm still sort of shocked when I eat a salty pimp. I wanted to do something fun one summer, and an ice cream truck presented itself to me through a friend. So I became an ice cream trucker. My background was playing the bassoon. I moved to New York to go to Manhattan School of Music and then played in different freelance classical groups here and in Boston. Rather than call it Doug's Big Ice Cream Truck or Doug and Brian's whatever, uh, I just called it the Big Gay Ice Cream Truck because the whole thing seemed kind of gay. <laughs> you know, it was a middle-aged guy in an ice cream truck that was going to sell high-end toppings in the streets of New York. And it's got a freaking unicorn on it licking <laughs> a large soft serve rainbow cone. The package is, is fantastic. It's going to catch your eye one way or the other, and you're either going to love it or you are going to get offended by it. <laughs> I haven't seen it on the shelf. I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure how well it'd go over up here, maybe down in the, you know, Boise, or they might have it in Spokane or a large metropolitan area, but. Uh, no, I have, I have yet to run across the big gay ice cream in the stores that I've been to. So this, I bought this at the store today, and the I was intending to go to the self-checkout with all my groceries, <laughs> not necessarily because I was embarrassed by my big gay ice cream. <laughs> I just don't like interacting with other human beings. But they were all closed for some reason, so I feel like the world was conspiring against me, and so I had to go through the line. And of course, what happens? As the person's ringing it up, they hold it up and start talking about my big gay ice cream and <laughs> how it's new and they haven't seen it before and just calling attention mm-hmm. to everybody within <laughs> earshot that I'm the guy buying the big gay ice cream. <laughs> but again, just like those skinny diet Coke cans, if you don't like uh-huh. it, if it offends you, that makes me happy. <laughs> now, they had a bunch of different flavors for this big gay ice cream. And one of them was called Salty Pimp. That was it. Uh-huh. I was going to grab it, but I don't like caramel that much. So I, I, I went for one. The name isn't as cool, but it's the Blueberry Gobbler. <laughs> and I, you know, maybe there's some double entendre in there. I had gobblers a little, yeah. And this one, man. All right, you know, this one is vanilla ice cream with blueberries, pie crust pieces, and blueberry balsamic swirls. You can charge like an extra dollar for this pint just by putting balsamic in there, too. Like balsamic, is that like balsamic vinegar? Yeah, I think like, a, I guess they're saying that the raspberry has a little like vinegary tang to it. Huh. Okay. There's a story here. Summer 2009, a mysterious object <laughs> hurtled toward Earth and crashed in New York City. Fuck! No! It can't be! What is it? It can't be! What did you do, Ray? Everyone prepared for the worst, but a most peculiar thing happened. Instead of death and destruction, swirls of ice cream and rainbows and sprinkles and unicorns and kitties came pouring out. Big A ice cream had arrived. Well, there's something you don't see every day. And now it's invaded <laughs> your freezer. It's so hard not to love this damn stuff. And look, it's got no RBST. That means that, you know, no one's messing with the cows, injecting them with weird stuff. Ja Rule had a big part in that for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not a Halo Top. This is a real man's ice cream. This is, uh, what do you got here? You got four servings per pint. It's a pint and a half cup each. 200 calories per serving. It's full flavored ice cream all the way. 10 grams of fat, 22 grams of sugar. Let's see. Anything else interesting on here? Uh, well, the thing, the little label that you peel off too, that's great too. That has like bears and clip art unicorns and things like that on it. It's, uh, it's hard not to love. I'm looking at it. It's not, uh, you know, it, ha- it mentions it has all these things in it, but it's not, it's not, uh, overly congested with them like Ben and Jerry's is. You know, like Ben and Jerry's when you get a pint of like the Heath bar or something? It's like, it's like more heat bar than even ice cream. It's kind of annoying if you feel like ice cream. Yeah, that's, the ice cream's just kind of a sideshow when it, with Ben and Jerry's. Let's give it a shot. This looks nice. And it's, had, it's, kind of, it's been sitting out for about 10 minutes, like that car ride home. There's nothing better than like a scoop of ice cream when you're taking the groceries out. And it's just like that perfect meltiness. Oh, of course. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually kind of nice. There's some fresh, there's some fle- fresh blueberries in here. There's some pie crust. There's the swirl. I'm supposed to be looking for balsamic, aren't I? Yeah. Mm. 
Now, I'm not really feeling the tang from it, but you know, this is a nice ice cream. It's that, that full flavored cream. So you don't get that, you know, that watered down taste you get with like a God forbid Arctic ice or a halo top or something like this. This is, this is real ice cream. It's good stuff. It's creamy. It's interesting because I just had a gelato from this company in Maine that was very similar. It was like blueberry cobbler. And that was, that was delicious. That was a little bit better than this. And that was like a, geez, that was like one of my favorite ice creams. That was like a 9.5, but this is really good. This is a, this is a solid. Eight eight point five. I'm definitely going to get some big gay ice cream again. <laughs> right? Once you go big gay ice cream, you never go back. I'm fine with that. That sounds cool, though. So it it would supplant a, a different brand. This is marketing aside, the name aside, and stuff like that. Plain package, you would say this is a better ice cream than you know some of the standard ones, Briars, Dryers, you know those things. You would say this is this is on par with your favorites. Oh yeah, but those ones are, aren't even. I wouldn't consider those premium ice creams. Those are those are like low tier, like that. And you got your Briars, and you got your uh, you got like your Hood, and you got your uh, Turkey Hill. Ugh, Turkey Hill, I don't like it all. Yeah, and I think a lot of those can't even claim to be ice cream they say like frozen dairy product yeah well first of all halo top i'm not really a fan of it i you know <laughs> i get the gimmick and i was into it for a little while but you know i just like i rather just have good ice cream instead of like this fake diet ice cream and plus like it wasn't really helping with the waistline because it's still like 360 calories a pint and the whole gimmick is like eat the whole pint in one sitting yeah you know gotta stick with the portion control but yeah so i would put this like up against like a hog and dawes a ben and jerry's that tier of ice cream like the uh Four ninety nine to six ninety nine for a pint level, and yeah, I would. Hmm. Okay, pretty sure I'd have to travel far away from here if I was going <laughs> to try locate that uh, that brand. I just don't think it's going to take off. Would people complain if they saw big gay ice cream? <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just have a hunch. You know, I've lived here long enough. I just, <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> we have a bunch of stuff to get to. You went to the grocery store too. What was the first weird snack that you found? Well, here's the thing. I had to go off the beaten path just because I knew I was looking for weird things. And I sure, I, I'm sure I could have filtered through the regular store and, you know, searched high and low for different things. And there's plenty of stuff I haven't eaten before. So what I picked up here, um, the first thing I got is this garden. It's called Garden of Eaton, like eating, but hyphenated kind of, or uh, abbreviated. They're gluten free pumpkin chips. I'm eating it. You know, Garden of Eaton is uh, the, the little cute name they came up with. These are part of the non-GMO project. Project, and what's what's funny is that these. Are, oh, this guy. This would just piss this guy off. I'd love to go to his house and just leave these with him, because <laughs> what they are is just corn chips uh, made of organic yellow corn, but they're pumpkin flavored. They've got organic pumpkin seed and pumpkin powder. Isn't that a little out of season? I'm sure these are seasonal, <laughs> and they don't expire until um, August. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> I just thought, who in their in the entire world thought, man, let's put pumpkin flavoring on these corn chips, and that's gonna that's what's gonna put us over the top profit wise. I'm getting in the bag. It kind of smells like dog food. It kind of smells like cheap dog food. Like, uh, you know, you get the corn meal scent. That's the problem. I'm not getting any pumpkin. Just kind of the big whiff of uh, maybe a little hint of spice, but mostly the corn is what you're smelling. Wait, hold on a second. Th- these these aren't made out of pumpkin at all. It's just <laughs> artificial is it artificial or natural pumpkin no, they've seasoning got, on there like i say it's it's just corn chips flavored with pumpkin powder and organic pumpkin seed oh and they've got a little bit of nutmeg that's what i was smelling the spice a little bit of nutmeg on them so they are pumpkin flavored corn chips made with organic yellow corn <laughs> and i thought good god who <laughs> who it, it just caught my eye so anyways these are 140 calories a serving you get uh one ounce, about eight chips, seven grams of fat, pretty low sodium, 10 milligrams. Good for them. And then 16 carbs. Oh, two grams of protein. So I'm going to pop one of these into my mouth and let you know what I come up with here. All right. I'm still eating my ice cream over here. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. I'll tell you what they taste like, dude. They do kind of taste a little bit stale, a little bit bland. I think it's because I'm used to having salt, you know, with them. Uh, they're not overly crunchy. They're not the consistency of like a Tostito, but they're not as thin as like the Juanitas. They're somewhere kind of in between those two. But what you get is is a lot of sweetness. What they almost remind me of is uh, like a churro, like with the little crispy things you get at the Taco Bell or, you know, those little, do you know what I'm talking about? Those swirly little 
churro things at Taco Yeah, yeah. The Cheetos that I did, the Cheeto cinnamon puffs are were similar to that. Yeah. Here's another cool thing. I, as a side note, I, I was an avid nicotine gum chewer. I was addicted. I've been addicted to nicotine my whole life in one form or another. But I recently quit a very long-standing, like years-long habit of chewing nicotine gum, and I was proficient at it. And that's just opened up my taste buds. It's amazing, and I'm, I'm really thrilled about that aspect of it. It's, uh, among the other health benefits, I can really taste things better now. Oh, I thought you were going to compare the flavor to nicotine and gum. Like, Where's he going with this? Where's this story? Hey, so what, what's your rating on here? We got a lot of snacks to get to. Let's let's get on to. Uh, um, these aren't bad. I'm a little disappointed at the kind of the lack of pumpkin flavor. I'm going to give these probably like a uh, maybe a three. I'm not going to buy them again. It's a small bag. They don't appeal to me health wise. I guess if you're looking at cutting sodium and stuff like that. I don't, I can't imagine what you would dip these in to pair with, uh, and, and by themselves, they're just kind of a, a, a sweet corn chip. They're not overly flavored like anything. And I definitely wouldn't think, oh, wow, that's a really delicious pumpkin flavored snack. Not that that. All right. Um, let's not buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, man. Okay. <laughs> You're like my mother-in-law. It's like, okay, mom, I, I got to go. And she's like, you know, what do you think? You, should we start working on that fence? Or <laughs> No, I gotta, I'm, I'm hanging up on you. Uh, so I found one like you. This one, I think, would really cheese off this GQ guy. This is not just Lucky Charms. It's Lucky Charms Frosted Flakes. So they just took some Frosted Flakes and threw some Lucky Charms marshmallows in there. Ingenious, right? Mm-hmm. So I hope this, I wonder if this will solve the problem. So my kids, when I get them Lucky Charms, they, they do it all kids. They just eat the marshmallows out of them. So I had to stop getting Lucky Charms. But maybe with these Frosted Flakes, they'll, they'll do it. Do you consider cereal a snack? Mm, no. Like a dry handful of cereal, I don't do it. Oh, yeah. See, I do. Sometimes I'll, I'll take it to the couch and I'll, and I'll do it that way. So because of that, I'm going to try these dry before I pour some milk on them because I, I can't pour the milk off of them, right? So, but here we go. It's Lucky Charms Frosted Flakes. Whole grain is the first ingredient. Uh, 120 calories per serving, 10 grams of sugar. You know, these sugar cereals, if you pick up like the supposedly healthy ones, a lot of times they actually have less sugar than the supposedly healthy option. And like, the, God forbid the granola ones. The granola cereals are like 280 calories per serving. It's crazy. Like, it's so fat on those. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's try this. I wonder if these are going to taste just like Frosted Flakes. Hmm. Hmm. You know, this particular cereal, I think I've outgrown Lucky Charms, and the Frosted Flakes makes it even sweeter. But I'm going to try with some milk, because Lucky Charms isn't a great dry cereal anyway. Let me give a little milk to it. Let's see what's going on. They got, uh, do they have any new cool marshmallows on here? No. No. All right, let's see if the milk does this Does this a solid. Mm. Mm. Um, they sell these marshmallows. Alone, you can just buy them off Amazon, like without the cereal. That's the way to go with these things. You know, the Frosted Flakes, they try to mix it up, but it's still, it's too sweet. I just want to, like, give my kid the marshmallows, because I always end up having to eat all the rest of the, the Lucky Charms I could throw in the box. So, I do have a bit of a vendetta against them, and I bought these to, you know, to, to cut my nose, to spite my face, just to, to anger the GQ guy. Like you said, I just want to bring these to his house and leave them there. <laughs> Five out of ten. Yeah, I bought those for my kid a little while ago, and I haven't bought them since. He hasn't really clamored for them. I picked up this this other kind of, again, just to, I know it'd rankle this guy. Um, it's called Wild Ophelia Crafted American Chocolate Company. And what this is, is a milk chocolate bar made with beef jerky. It's Alderwood smoke flavor. And it says, what's cool is it's made in Chicago. This company's out of Chicago, but it says, our beef jerky is crafted on the plains of Idaho. Wait a second. It's beef. It's chocolate with beef jerky infused in it? With like chocolate <laughs> beef jerky? Like, like, you know how they yeah. got raisins, like a chocolate bar with raisins in it? Except it's chunks of yeah. meat. Hmm. Yes. And I didn't know what to expect when it said, I mean, it just says chocolate bar made with beef jerky. But I actually popped a piece in a minute ago just so I had a little... Uh, experience here and it is it's it's a it's kind of a what it is is kind of a mediocre sort of chocolate it's not real super milky it isn't real melty it, kind of a hershey bar sort of consistency like the wax the waxy sort of chocolate so not super high quality chocolate but yeah when you let it dissolve or when you chew it there are little flecks that you can feel in your mouth of shredded up you know chopped up beef jerky so it's really weird you definitely get a hit of smoke flavor when you pop it in your mouth 
that's the first thing you get. And then as you chew and the chocolate dissolves and stuff, you get these little pieces of beef jerky that stay on your teeth after the chocolate's dissolved. I mean, overall, I'm going to give this a, I'm going to give this probably a two. That, that sucks about the chocolate because that, that just, that's such a, a delivery vessel. It's like having bad ice cream, but, but the idea and the concept is so good. It, it's sad, it's sad to hear because that does sound like it could be tasty, but it could also be executed really poorly as well. I guess certain things to me go hand in hand with chocolate, but this, uh, this doesn't work for me. I don't like the little chewy grains of jerky that are in there that are kind of hard to chew because they're so small and, uh, the flavor mixture doesn't really work well. The saltiness is okay, but again, there's like Worcestershire sauce and liquid smoke and things like that that to me just don't don't really sell well so two out of ten yeah <laughs> two out of ten i'm not buying it again i'll all give right, this all right, I'll all right. kids <laughs> when i was in the when i was in the cereal aisle and i saw those lucky charms as i was walking out of the cereal aisle scratching my head on what to grab next i walked past the pop tart display and lo and behold there are pop tarts dunkin donut frosted vanilla latte now this is like a, a hydrogen bomb dropped on this gq guy i mean this is just going to annihilate him you can't survive <laughs> a dunkin donuts flavored pop tart What's the world coming to? And you know what's the, the uncanny thing is? Well, here, I'll give you the stats real quick. We got, uh, let's see here, 200 calories per pastry. But you know what they do? They trick you with these things because they give you like a packet, but it's got two Pop-Tarts in each little individually sealed packet. But each one of these is a serving. So if you eat the whole thing, it's going to be 400 calories. You got to mark off there. Mm. And these are vanilla latte. I don't know if just because like Dunkin' Donuts is a huge thing in Massachusetts, or I don't know if you guys have these either. It says limited edition. They also have like a mocha latte, but the vanilla latte just seemed like there's no way they could execute it. So that's why I got it. <laughs> it's weird. You know, it smells when you open it up. It smells like Dunkin' Donuts coffee. It's so strange. Let's see. I wonder if it tastes like it. And uh, full disclosure too, I don't really like Pop Tarts, so this is a uh, this is gonna be a tough one. And don't take my score too hard if you're a Pop Tart lover. Hmm. You know what? That's the best Pop Tart I have ever had in my life. Really? Yeah, I like it. You know, because the coffee filling or whatever the vanilla latte filling they have in there. It was a lot less sweet than the uh, like the regular jams, and uh, I had like a Jolly Rancher pop tart. <laughs> it's just too it is too sugary those ones, but this it kind of balances out a little bit. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run out and buy pop tarts all the time, but if I were to get pop tarts again, I would get these Dunkin' Donut vanilla latte. So I'm gonna give these a six out of ten. I know. Fair enough. I'll uh, look for them. <clears throat> The next one that I picked up, and this was a little less adventurous than the other ones, were just these. Yeah, but I hadn't seen them before. They're Pringles. They're called Pringles Loud, which I don't know what, you know, if there's quiet Pringles or whatever, but these are Pringles Loud. Mighty Margarita Pizza. They're basically Pringle-flavored corn chips. Uh, they're very thin, you know, got the standard Pringle shape. And uh, the Margarita Pizza is what appealed to me. I just thought that's kind of an unusual flavor. And I'll tell you what, they, uh, they did pretty good. Pringles is kind of like Doritos lately, where they ventured out as far as their uh flavor profiles but man these are i've been eating these and uh man i I really like them probably one of the better pringles flavors that i had you can definitely taste like the basil and the they're a bold flavor they're not real subtle pretty salty you know but that's kind of what you expect with the pringles and uh you know not not healthy for you 140 calories seven grams of fat again 200 grams of sodium per pretty good i'm gonna give these an eight i'm gonna eat the rest of the can probably not going to share these ones with the kids yeah you know mediterranean flavor it's 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 in vogue i i actually had in my hand a bag of cape cod mediterranean potato chips so at one of those snacks pill conferences word must have got out so everyone's doing a med now med's the big thing Mm. we're snack masters inc you can find this episode and all of our old ones at snackmastersinc.com we're also on itunes google play stitcher and everywhere podcasts are consumed around the world Follow us on Instagram. There we have all of our food photos, mini reviews, and videos. Speaking of videos, we've also got a YouTube channel at Snack Masters Inc. At Snack Masters Inc. on the Twitter. And if you have a comment or concern for us, or if you want to defend GQ or take our side, email us Snack Masters Inc. at gmail.com. MSG. You ever been to a baseball game before? Yeah, yeah, I've been to a couple of Pirates games over there in Pittsburgh. Have you ever ordered crickets to eat at a baseball game? <laughs> no, I, I have not. <laughs> well, I have good news for you. you, you you're going to have to travel, though, but you can now get a side of grasshoppers at a Mariners game in Seattle. That's right, Safeco Field is now selling 
chili, limon, grasshoppers. So you, you wonder like how the supply chain works, right? So I guess all these grasshoppers come from Mexico, and they have all these people in the field who they catch these grasshoppers by hand. Like it, I read the the, the paragraph in the, in the article like eight times because I'm like, how is this possible? Like they really get they don't just harvest these like inside of a warehouse. They really like out in a field at, at the crack of dawn, grabbing them while they're still sleeping. Like that's what the article said. But you know that's what it says. So these they're harvested there, they're processed, and they're cooked. The way they do that is they throw all of these crickets into a pot of boiling water. Ah! Then they pull them out. I guess that's sterilized them. Then they put them in an oven, which dehydrates them. But then here comes the best part. Then they have to remove the antennas and the legs because those can easily get lodged in people's teeth, gums, and throat (laughs) because they're barbed for grabbing onto blades of grass and things like that. And uh, your esophagus. Yeah, I can see that. That sort of makes sense, I guess. As I mentioned, they are then seasoned. So they're, they're sent up to Safeco Fields, reheated, and then they're seasoned <laughs> with the chili lime <laughs> flavoring. A four-ounce container is only going to set you back $4, which, you know, for a baseball stadium seems like a fairly reasonable price. And you know what? People are buying them, too. They've sold over 18,000 grasshoppers. They've sold almost just as many in those three days at the baseball game as they had the history of their company or whatever. It's, it's They're flying off the shelves. And I guess people are putting it on their tacos because it's sold at that little Mexican eatery. It's not like just a stand that sells uh, um, crickets. You can sprinkle them with your tacos or eat them regular. But I'm sure a couple of people were the brave ones and ventured out and decided to. But word spread, I guess they're just flying out of there. I've had to limit their orders to it was like 312 orders per game, something like that, because uh, the demand is so high. So I can I can see this taking off. It's a bad day to be a grasshopper. <laughs> you ever intentionally eat bugs before? Have you had like uh, chocolate covered ants or any of these these different bug things? Or, you know, if you go to China, I remember when the Olympics were there, they were showing people eating like scorpions on sticks. No, I, I think I might have put a, like eaten an ant when I was a kid just on a dare. But I actually asked my daughter about this. Like, how much would you have to pay? Would someone have to pay you to eat a cricket? And she's like, oh, I'd do it. I guess there's a theme park close by here that sells cooked maggots and um, flies and things like that. And she bought some and ate them. I guess it's no big deal to her, you know? Like, why? Like, she enjoys it? That? She has like a weird fetish. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, again, she's a kid and thought, oh, this would be cool. You know, you remember that show Fear Factor <laughs> with like Joe Rogan hosting? Yeah. And once in a while, you'd have to eat like really, really disgusting things. Yeah. And I always felt like that would be the hardest part for me because I can be particular about like meats and cooked food like that and, and raw foods. So that would always gross me out. But once in a while, you would have like a, like a chick or a dude on there who was really into like the blood clot that they were eating. Yeah. And I was like, man. What makes you tick? Yeah, no, I. it would take a – I think I might try it, I guess, if, if I knew everybody else was doing it. I, I, I would go to a game, and, and it's funny because that's actually the closest stadium, so probably the most likely baseball game I'd go to. If I was there, I'd drop four bucks. Oh, yeah. Man, I got to go out there and go to a Mariners game with you, so for <laughs> Snack Masters, we can try these crickets. I would do it. Big Cricket is really trying to put crickets over these days. Like, e- even in that article – Every time I hear anything about crickets, they always have this exact same copy going on about how the world's going to run out of food by 2050. Crickets need six times less feed than cattle, four times less than sheep, and twice less than pigs to produce the same amount of protein. Yeah. They have these cricket chips out here called chirps. I I never had them, but I would eat them. I would like if you grind a bug up. Yeah, whatever. I'll probably eat it. But not like a maggot, though. But I got cricket. Yeah, they're going to get they're going to get mainstream and they're going to start breeding them in, you know, farms and crap like that. They're they're obviously going to have to move away from like the the wild caught crickets. I'm sure that'll be a selling point at some sometime. They're going to make cricket chips and, you know, salsa and put it hide it in a bunch of food just because, yeah, they say what nine billion people on the planet. We're going to run out of food. And so we have to eat bugs now. I predict that the generation under millennials, I don't, they don't even have a name yet. But when they come of age, I think that they're the ones who are going to make crickets mainstream because they're, they're going to want to do something different that no I one guess. else has done. <laughs> I guess. Can't predict the outcome. Can't predict the environmental impact and all that. But yeah, I see it coming. Well, Snackmaster Jr., take us away, young <laughs> grasshopper. Where's California? It's on the other side of the country. Our cows. Uh, on there? <laughs> no. Why? It's California. <laughs> California. Cowabunga, dude. Cowabunga. Snackmasters Incorporated. 
Snack Master! Snack Master! You'll be snacking with the Snack Master!